Hi, and welcome back to COM1 Public Speaking Online. Today, our topics are going to be about speech topic selection and brainstorming processes. Now, choosing a speech topic might be the hardest part of this class, and with really good reason. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves to pick the right speech topic or the best speech topic. One the audience will like, but let's be real, also one that will just get us a good grade. So before we start talking about the topic selection process, I want you to first just take a deep breath and relieve yourself as best you can of this pressure. In this class, picking a perfect topic is certainly not the goal. There's no right or best or perfect speech topic. In fact, I've even heard some of the best speeches from students on mundane things like how to change a tire, maybe train a new puppy. I've even heard a speech about why we should continue searching for Bigfoot. The key to a good speech is really more about delivery and that's something that we get into a little bit later. But for now, let's just start simple because I know what you're asking yourself and that is what am I going to talk about for my first speech? So for this part of the lesson, I always suggest that students get out a piece of blank paper and something to write with. I'm going to introduce you to a few different brainstorming methods, and at any point, if any of it makes sense, feel free to jot down what comes to mind. Who knows? By the end of today, you might even have a list of all your speech topics for the entire semester. Make sure that you let your imagination just go free and run wild with whatever comes to mind and write everything down because I'll be introducing a lot of different prompts. So let's start with a few different brainstorming methods. The first one I like to call looking in. And this is a topic selection process that really starts with you, where you look inside of yourself to examine your own interests, goals, hobbies, maybe even fears, anxieties, skill sets you possess, experiences, all while taking a personal inventory. To do this, start by making a table or a list on a piece of paper and across the top of a table, write down various categories, things that come to mind. Mine here are interests, goals, hobbies, fears, skills, and experiences. Of course, these are only a few of the potential categories you could use, so feel free to make them your own and select others. The looking inward method is especially ripe for the first speech, the personal anecdote, and that's because it's a speech about you, so you should be picking a story or a topic that is familiar to you, one that you are the expert on. So you might as well start with something that you already know. Looking out is a topic selection process where you look outward, quite literally, to your local community, maybe even the media, social networking groups or social media, just to see what's going on in the world around you that you have experience with or exposure to in a meaningful way. So go ahead and create another table, kind of like the one above, but this time, Fill in some ideas with things that you have heard or seen or are, or are parts of your local network. The idea is that you take topics you know and topics you love, but really try to connect them to topics that your audience cares about. And topics your audience cares about are oftentimes found by looking to our local communities or outward in the media. So. Within a community, I could say, for example, I'm on a sports team and talk about sports, or I live next to a national monument. Maybe even I usually attend social, or I'm sorry, a local music festival. Those are all events and things that happen within my community that I'm a part of, and I'm sure I could uh, tell a good story to go along with it. From here, you can begin to imagine what any one of these topics look like in any speech format whether it's a story, informative, or persuasive. The third way that we can come up with a speech topic involves this idea of brainstorming idea maps. 
Idea mapping is one of my most favorite strategies, probably because I'm a really spatial thinker. And maybe it's one that you've already had some familiarity with. Idea mapping starts by putting one word or a short phrase in the center of a circle. You know where this is going, right? After you write down that one word or phrase, which is typically general in nature, then your job is to let your mind wander in all directions and write down any new words or phrase associations that pop up in separate but connected circles, thus creating chains of interconnected thoughts and ideas. Start by writing down a topic that you're interested in, maybe a sports star, something on Twitter, um, maybe a communication style like flirting. Really, it's up to you. The list could be endless. You put that vague or general idea in the middle of your map and ask yourself what comes to mind when I think of this thing. Then start recording your responses as mentioned in separate but interconnected circles. You can continue this process for several minutes, again, letting your mind wander and wander as you come up with two, three, and four layers of interconnected ideas that create a map. Once you have your map, or sometimes called a web, in front of you, now it's time to start searching for relationships or patterns and ideas between the words and phrases that really helps you narrow or focus that main idea. Herein lies, potentially, your speech topic. So using the examples that I've given you, feel free to make an idea map of your own and start filling in those extra layers. So the choice is really yours and I get it. Maybe you've had some trouble getting the creative juices going just while watching this tutorial and that's okay. Every good writer and every good speech maker runs into a writer's or a speech block from time to time. So come back later. Pick a time when your mind is really ready to work. Do you do a better job in the morning with your schoolwork? Maybe the afternoon? Perhaps late at night? Maybe you don't even have the freedom to choose a time when to do your schoolwork. And I get that too, having three kids of my own. There are, however, some speech topics that lend themselves to more effective and audience-centered like speaking, in case you're wondering. So, for example, topics that are really highly political or oversensitive, sort of some cultural um, hot-button topics, for example, or maybe even pop up too soon after a recent personal or national crisis, don't usually make for the best audience-centered speeches. That said, I've had a good public speaking mentor that told me one time to think about whether or not now was the best time to give my speech. Now, let me elaborate. Let's say that a grandparent recently passed away from, I don't know, whatever's going on, right? Um, I recently had a grandparent passed away, so for me, this is kind of top of mind. And then I want to give a speech, maybe a tribute speech to that grandparent. Well, now might not be the best time to turn around and give that speech or even raise money for awareness about their health cause. Um, and that's not because the topic lacks any importance or doesn't need attention, because often those speech topics do. But it's because sometimes the topics that we like the most can touch a little too close to home and make the content challenging, emotional, or even hard to get through. In these cases, as with many topics that are around touchy, sensitive, or political content, I always do my best to warn students against choosing these simply because the idea in this class is to showcase your public speaking skills. And also because we always want to be thinking about the audience and stay audience-centered. So go ahead. Once you've created a few tables, start an idea map of your own. Practice with a couple of the different methods and be sure to read the first uh, speech prompt so that you're ready to brainstorm with that in mind. 